Hey guys, welcome to another video for Anatomy and Physiology. In this lecture video, we're taking a look at the dyncephalon. So the dyncephalon is essentially the most superior aspect of the brainstem, which I have pictured here. Okay, so here you have the medulla, the pons, the midbrain, and then you have the dyncephalon just sitting above it. The dyncephalon is three structures that we're going to discuss. Uh, number one, the hypothalamus, uh, the most anterior, and then in the middle we have the thalamus, and then on the posterior we're going to have the pineal gland, or pineal gland, depending on who's saying it. So just to kind of get some perspective on uh, on this, uh, keep in mind, as mentioned before in other lectures, so the central nervous system, uh, the first aspect of it from uh, working our way up is the spinal cord. And as we mentioned before in the spinal cord, if you remember the transverse cut of the spinal cord, um, the, the white matter, the, part, the, uh, the white part on the outside, not the Honda H, not the gray matter. So you have, like the, you have these really long columns. You have white matter, these myelinated axons that travel all the way up the spinal cord. And then they terminate at the brainstem. And at the brainstem, if you remember the, the, uh, the cuts that we had, okay, we had the um, we had the medulla oblongata, and then we had the midbrain, and then at, at at these points, the axons, okay, the first order or the second order neurons, uh, were processed in the in the um, brainstem. They were processed by by nuclei, gray matter. So remember that nuclei, the the uh, nerve cell bodies. This is where the those signals are processed and then re redirected into. Um, into other nuclei in the, in the brainstem, mainly the thalamus, if you remember that. Okay, so you remember your brain on the outside, right? And then you have the thalamus, the blue spots that, that I showed you, um, that the images that we had. Okay, the, the gray matter, the thalamus. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and dive into this. So again, we have the hypothalamus, the thalamus, and then the pineal gland at the back here. So this is just a general overview again and so let's zoom in on the hypothalamus okay so the hypo meaning below just below the thalamus so as we zoom in one of the things that i want to highlight here is uh, uh the structures that that make up the hypothalamus so i'm going to kind of take off i'm going to take off that um that covering and you can see here an even closer look on the inside what you're seeing there is you're looking at a bunch of nuclei okay all these nuclei play a crucial role uh, in the body's um, endocrine system. Okay, essentially the metabolism. Okay, so there's a lot of hormones that are that are produced here and then sent to the uh, pituitary gland, which we'll discuss uh, later. Okay, so as you can see here, you have a lot of nuclei uh, that uh, that process hormones, and and these hormones help regulate just about every organ in the body. And just to kind of summarize some of the uh, some of the functions of these nuclei, we're talking about hormone secretion, uh, controlling the autonomic nervous system, thermal regulation. So this is your body's thermostat. Uh, so when you're taking Tylenol, Tylenol uh, affects the hypothalamus and um, reducing a fever, for example. Your food and water intake, uh, circadian rhythm. So uh, you know producing. Uh, serotonin for example that will help you sleep uh, memory and the emotional connections that you have with memory and, and this is part of a, a larger system called a limbic system where uh, your, your emotional centers uh, that produce anger you know your emotions of anger and uh, um, positive feelings towards things and such so as you can see here there's a lot going on in a hypothalamus right a lot of nuclei a lot of gray matter that's uh, that produces uh, hormones and such that help uh, the body uh, pre um, pretty much stay homeostatic okay so maintains homeostasis throughout the body so then as we're, as we're going we're moving up a little bit and now we're looking at the thalamus okay now the thalamus I've kind of faded it let me hide the let me take away the covering that the hypothalamus had as you can see there's one on the right and left so just like the hypothalamus you'll notice that there's large bodies 
um, large nuclei. And there's about 23 nuclei, or just a little bit more than 23 nuclei. You're out here you only have a couple being shown. Um, you have the, the midthalamic nuclei, the anterior, the lateral, and then you have the um, uh, pulvinar. So, uh, you know, as you can see here, the, the thalamus takes up about about four-fifths uh, of the entire dyncephalon. Uh, and as mentioned before, if you recall again in the previous videos where your your signals were sent up the spinal cord and then there was nuclei here that processed that signal and then sent it up the thalamus. And then from the thalamus, the thalamus is uh, pretty much every sensory signal gets sent and processed to the thalamus. And then from the thalamus, your thalamus will decide then what specific part of the cerebral cortex that signal will go to uh, so that the brain can then process uh, the next action at that point. So just as a reminder, we're looking at taste, smell, hearing, equilibrium, vision, uh, pain, pressure, heat, cold. I remember holding the, remember the, you know, holding the, the warm cup of tea or, or maybe holding a cold metal bar. If you're a kid playing on the, um, you know, if you're playing in the playground or watching somebody play on the playground or whatever the case may be. Um, so the thalamus is a major, major processing center, a gray matter. Uh, a lot of nuclei there, a lot of stuff goes on there at the thalamus. And then finally, we're going to turn around to the, on the posterior aspect. We're going to have this tiny little guy there. This is called the pineal gland or the pineal gland. Uh, this this actually uh, is referred to as the epithalamus. Okay, So again, you have the hypothalamus, the thalamus, and then the epithalamus. All right. uh, now the epithalamus or the pineal gland as you can see, it's a really small mass. Um, there's actually another gland, the um, habenula, and uh, this pineal gland is responsible for uh, synthesizing melatonin. Okay, uh, melatonin. So um, it's not really shown here, but the optic nerve actually has a pretty straight connection to this uh, to this pineal gland because the, the optic nerve. Okay, so uh, it's it forms from the retina, the back of the eye, the nervous tissue in the back of the eye. So when light hits that retina. You know, like as the sun's the sun's coming up, and, you know, the room's getting lighter. Uh, that sends a signal to the pineal gland, or actually uh, the other way around. Let's say the sun's setting, and and you're, there's less light uh, in in your surroundings in your environment. So that the, the as the light lessens, um, the pineal gland will then start producing synthesizing melatonin, and that that hormone essentially starts to shut down every body. So you start to feel more relaxed, a little bit more tired. And eventually you just fall asleep thanks to uh, melatonin that's produced in the pe uh, pineal gland. Okay, so uh, I think that does it. That's it for the um, diencephalon. So again, just as a quick overview, you have the hypothalamus, the thalamus, and then the epithalamus or the pineal gland. And these three components uh, make up uh, a lot of nuclei, a lot of gray matter. And these make up what's called the dyncephalon. Okay, guys, uh, thanks for watching and good luck in your studying.